To me, this is a very valuable visit at a very critical juncture. And your coming to Pakistan at such a time means a lot. It means that you have a vision and you can see beyond. You can see beyond the emotional rhetoric and I give you credit for that. I think you have set a trend and hopefully more will follow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've had an excellent uh, uh, discussion on Austria-Pakistan bilateral relations. Uh, we've charted uh, a way forward. We've seen what has happened in the past, the possibilities of trade and investment, uh, the possibilities, and we've identified and highlighted areas where we can benefit from each other. We also had a very good uh, discussion on uh, the regional uh, situation. Um, I shared with the Foreign Minister uh, my evaluation of the Afghan situation. I've also shared with the Foreign Minister my uh, concerns about the humanitarian situation in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. We've also had an exchange of views on the, uh, the European situation, the Ukrainian situation. Uh, we've discussed that. Uh, the Foreign Minister has uh, brought with him uh, a delegation of uh, Austrian businessmen. Uh, they'll be meeting their counterparts and they'll be having a meeting with the Commerce Minister. He is traveling to Lahore as well. And it, I'm happy to hear that because Getting out of Islamabad is the real Pakistan, and you've got to see the real Pakistan. So in Lahore, uh, you will uh, have an opportunity of interacting and meeting with people uh, that, uh, that is important beyond, beyond the officialdom. Uh, it is important because when we are talking about <coughs> building relations and talking of people-to-people -people contacts, that is very important that you reach out. So, Foreign Minister, thank you. Thank you for being here, and uh, I hope uh, you have a pleasant stay, and I hope you come back soon. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, the Minister, the colleague, for this very warm welcome in this beautiful city, beautiful country. And I told you at the beginning, the last time an Austrian foreign minister was here was exactly 15 years ago, March 2007. And then, young me, I was part of the delegation as a spokesperson of the then foreign minister. And, uh, Give a future. I'm, <laughs> 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 um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back. And uh, yes, we do. And the discussion has really proved. And sorry for being late. It proves that we had so many things. And we have to basically interrupt our discussion and say we are, we are continuing them over lunch. Because there are so many topics we, we, we need to discuss. Uh, reaching from the regional situation, the local situation, to the global situation with the war in Europe, which is raging again. Um, but let me start by extending my heartfelt condolences to the victims, to the families of the victims of this horrific attack in Peshawar. This is again a topic where Pakistan and Austria stand side by side in the fight against international terrorism and extremism. And um, having said so, I know that we met last of September. We talked at the time Afghanistan was very much in the focus of attention. And I think we have to watch out not to lose focus. I know that international attention media, social media tend to have only one subject at a time. But let's not forget that there are many crisis areas and many things in developments we have to have a very close uh, watch over. And Afghanistan is one of them. And I want to thank uh, Pakistan for the very valuable help they have extended to us when we had to evacuate our citizens and other people who had the right to come to Austria from Afghanistan during the crisis uh, last year. And yes, we do have a common approach. We want security and stability in Afghanistan. We are facing a situation where Europe is at war again. And uh, Filippo Gandhi of the UNHCR said that probably this is the biggest migration movement the world has seen since, since the Second World War. We may, might be facing up to 10 million people leaving 
the war zone in Ukraine. And no, we don't want other migration flows to add to this. And yes, we want uh, uh, to work on the Taliban that we have a situation there where the people see at least some sort of perspective within the country. And the neighboring region um, are very important there. And also, if I may say, and I'm very thankful for that, um, Islamic countries as such. The OIC, where Pakistan is going to host again a conference, and it's very active part, I believe they have a very uh, important role to play as, as examples for the Taliban in Afghanistan. And uh, um, I'm, as you said, I'm here with uh, uh, up to nearly 20 um, people representing business in Austria, including the Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we, what we're seeing now in Europe is an earthquake and tectonic plates are moving. And this will be a very heavy price, especially for Austria economically. But at the same time, we have to look for new markets too. And I believe Pakistan, South Asia might be, there might be possibilities. And yes, the EU is the most important trading partner. Hydrogen power, tourism, infrastructure, green technology. In all of these areas, Austrian companies are world leaders and they're looking into the possibilities to extend our, our business ties. And I believe that is uh, very important to us because what we're experiencing, the shockwaves of what we're experiencing, the war, the attack of Russia on Ukraine, this shockwave will be felt around the globe. This is not a, not a European war. Um, and I believe that we all have to be aware that what is happening there is a blatant attack on the interna international rules-based order we have built up together after the Second World War and after the fall of the Iron Curtain. And we have to watch out that the new world order, which might be developing, that it is still a rules-based order. The world will be more confrontational, and I believe no country can be indifferent to that. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. And I'm looking forward to continuing our discussion over lunch. Thank you. <laughs> We are already running late, but maybe we'll have the time for one or two questions. Maybe one from either side. Please start. Um, David. Thank you. David Kriegleder, Austrian Public Radio. Um, Your Excellency, Pakistan has stressed the importance of de-escalation in Ukraine, yet many Western countries, including Austria, seem to be disappointed that there hasn't been more clear language condemning the Russian aggression. Also, Pakistan abstained at, uh, at the vote uh, condemning the Russian aggression at the UN General Assembly. Uh, please help me understand, why is it so hard for Pakistan to find like a clearer voice here, especially given the fact that territorial integrity is an important issue for Pakistan, and given the, uh, given the aspect that Pakistan and Ukraine have important economic ties? Thank you. <coughs> You've uh, correctly pointed out that Pakistan and Ukraine have good bilateral relations and good ties. We feel for them, and we care for them. And we are concerned about the evolving situation, and we are more continuously evaluating and monitoring the situation. Looking at the humanitarian situation in Ukraine, uh, I myself uh, went to see off uh, you know, humanitarian assistance that Pakistan has sent to, uh, for the people of Ukraine. Having said that, I would draw your attention to um, the position that Pakistan has enunciated. What are we saying? We are saying that we do believe in international law. We respect UN Charter. We do understand uh, uh, the principle of self-determination, sovereignty, territorial integrity, we have uh, openly said that uh, war is no solution. We are advocating dialogue and diplomacy. As the Foreign Minister pointed out, uh, uh, Austria being a neutral country uh, and has had uh, you know, economic linkages with Russia and has taken certain uh, positions. Uh, they will hurt economically. Obviously, they will hurt economically. Europe is going to hurt economically. 
we are going to hurt economically and mm. what the foreign minister said and I agree with him if if the, if there is no cessation of hostilities uh, this this war could spread and I fear the spread uh, and I do agree the implications of this war are beyond Europe we here in Pakistan are already feeling the pinch of rising prices of petroleum products. You know, uh, many developing countries were, because of the COVID situation, and will, because of this new situation, feel the pinch of rising commodity prices. So, this war will hurt many in different ways. Pakistan is advocating dialogue and diplomacy. Pakistan wants to see uh, the uh, talks between Ukraine and Russia uh, conclude uh, to, 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 you know, to, uh, towards a positive, uh, there's a positive outcome. Uh, and uh, we're concerned about the loss of life. We have welcomed the uh, establishment of the humanitarian corridor. Uh, so we are not insensitive uh, to uh, international opinion and we also want the international, uh, you know, uh, reporters like you to understand that we are recovering ourselves from a long war. We've been in the midst of war for 20 years. We have paid a price in human terms. We have paid a price in, 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 in economic terms. And we have also seen how people look the other way. We also know how we have been abandoned. So we have to tread carefully. Thank you. One question from Mr. Adelpe. Yes, have seen this is so my question is, uh, just a day before, United Nations General Assembly adopted a landmark resolution condemning Islamophobia. And it was, among other states, so I see it was also initiative of Pakistan. Islamophobia has been a very serious issue across the world, particularly in Europe and North America. How you see the adoption of this resolution by United Nations General Assembly? And do you think it will address this issue? Uh, which is on the rise in Europe, and I will uh, like to seek the comments from our foreign minister. You didn't share details about uh, Austria, whether it is interested in enhancing investment in Pakistan. What is focus trade, economic ties? Please do share something on that as well. Thank you. I'm on Islamophobia, I'm, I'm, there can be no doubt where Austria stands. This is something where we have to be very watchful. Austria is a country which has since uh, uh, the beginning actually always placed its policy very clearly on international law, on fundamental freedoms. And Austria is the first country, the European country, first European country that actually adopted in 1912 a law on Islam. And in the Austrian army, what people forget, even before the First World War, we always had a Protestant priest, a Catholic priest, and an Imam. So Islam was part. Why? Because Bosnia-Herzegovina was part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So this was part of our reality. And there are movements, yes, there are situations in Europe, and we have to be very watchful, because on the one side, religion is often abused for political means, which creates on the other side um, intolerance based again on, on religious uh, adherence of individual persons. And this is something where the UN Charter is very clear, where the fundamental, the, uh, uh, all the rules and, and laws we have are very clear. Nobody should be discriminated because of his race, his political opinion, or his religious adherence. And this is for us one a red line we will never cross, and that's why I'm happy that, the, that at the UN there's a very strong position on that point too. Um, let me begin by saying that uh, I'm grateful to the Prime Minister for having acknowledged publicly, in a public meeting, the, the effort put in by the Foreign Office in uh, lobbying and building a consensus, not just in, uh, uh, in uh, the OIC, but 
in the international community to, uh, uh, to get that consensus for the, uh, uh, you know, for the Islamophobia resolution that was passed by the General Assembly. We are, we are very happy about it. On the interest of Austria for investments, uh, the former minister just pointed out that he is accompanied by 20 Austrian businessmen, vice president of the chamber. Now, if they did not have that interest, why would they be traveling all the way to Pakistan? We have discussed uh, uh, areas where there is uh, a mutual benefit for both sides. And you perhaps didn't pick up. Uh, he uh, made a point in his conversation, and he said, in the new situation, there will be new markets. Here's a market. Pakistan is a market of 220 million people. It's a market which can be a hub for re-export uh, into Central Asian uh, republics. Here's a new corridor. There's a new special economic zones being built along the corridor. So Pakistan is the place. He's come to the right place. So what is the new situation? The new maybe, situation? Yes. Maybe Ukraine, oh. Europe. <laughs> maybe Foreign Minister Schellenberg has something to add to that on the business relations? No, I mean, you're, you're right, and as I pointed out, we are accompanied by a business. So this is a geopolitical trip, um, and it's a business trip. Um, a geopolitical because I believe we have, as I said at the very beginning, to make sure that we don't lose out of sight other crisis areas because of the war, at the same time to make sure that you understand that this war is not a European war. This is not by far a European war. Don't get this wrong. This is something which will concern you, and you said it very correctly so. And it's a business trip. And yes, Austrian companies have been always good in the past to find out new opportunities, to find new markets. And uh, the thing is to find out whether the circumstances are those in place which could attract foreign direct investments. But I believe and I hope that this is the beginning, that this trip marks the beginning of a new era of Austrian-Pakistani relations not only politically, but also economically. Thank you, sir. I, I, I'm afraid in the interest of time, we'll have to conclude here. Thank you so much.